I don't know how to tell my dad I don't want him walking me down the aisle. Obligatory I'm on mobile, sorry for any formatting issues. So this has been something that I've thought about for a while, but my F21 boyfriend, M21, just proposed and now I have to fully face it. I have yet to tell my biological dad about the proposal because I know he's going to immediately bring up walking me down the aisle and quite possible the father-daughter dance. To say that my dad and I haven't had a great relationship is a downplay. We see each other maybe once every two or three months. I haven't seen him since June in fact, he hates my mother and has said very rude things about me and my brother's upbringing and how we turned out to her, he's a liar, will promise the moon and deliver nothing, and decided when I was 18 he was done helping me out in life, college, health problems, finding my own place to live, act. Yet he still wonders why I'm cold to him and why we don't talk more often. Regardless of this, I hate confrontation, which is part of the reason why I haven't just completely cut him out of my life. I want my brother, M23, to walk me down the aisle. He's already said he would do it and he's always been there for me. We have a great relationship, and I love him with all my heart. I want to give him this importance. So Reddit, I need advice on the easiest, least confrontation I own a way to tell my dad I don't want him to be the one to walk me down the aisle. Too long didn't read, I want my brother to walk me down the aisle but I don't know how to tell my dad. I understand and empathize with your wish to be non-confrontational. It's ultimately your and your future husband's decision and you have already been given great advice. I just wanted to add that white lies might be detrimental to your self-confidence and keep interactions with your father in the state they are now, while standing up for yourself might be a boost for your confidence. You are already being very circumspect and careful, you should have your wedding the way you want it, and since your father doesn't seem the subtle or even the support kind and could probably keep walking all over your feelings. I vote stick to your plan, save yourself the heartache, your father can be a guest like your other family members. Tell him in a less confrontational way if you have to, a letter or something. It doesn't sound like you want to remember your marriage with this guy walking you down the aisle and if your brother is closer to you, that would be a pity for him, too. I like the idea of you just calling him a guest. I really don't want him to be of importance on something like this, he just lost the privilege. I also won't be using an excuse as to why I don't want him to be doing it. I agree that lying would only make me feel uncomfortable and ultimately he would know. Thanks for the advice. Cut him off at the pass. I'm getting married and brother's name is walking me down the aisle, just like I've always wanted. Don't feel any guilt. No one has lived your life, and this day is about you. Make it yours. Say no. Anything you say to justify your decision gives him ammo to argue. One of the common mistakes people make is dithering to avoid confrontation, invariably this makes the situation worse. Tell him no. Mike is walking me down the aisle. Don't say you're sorry or act apologetic. Don't say no, because it isn't a discussion, it's FYI. It's your decision, you've made it, period. Incidentally, my dad did not walk me down the aisle. I find the whole concept of being given away demeaning. My husband and I walked down the aisle together because we were giving ourselves to each other. You bring up your news and if he asks say brother name will be walking me down the aisle. It's really that simple. Why coddle someone's feelings when they don't give an ass about yours? You don't need to explain or do anything and if he persists you say it's my decision and my day. If he brings it up again it's been decided, and I'm done talking about it and then I told you I wouldn't be talking about this anymore and then end the conversation. That said if your dad will be paying for anything you might have a harder time. Don't accept any money from him as he will feel like you owe him a say. You and someone else mentioned how simplistic this could be and it gave me a lot of perspective. I tend to overthink and worry a lot about the what ifs, so this kind of reminds me that it can be that simple, thank you. Also there's no way he'd be paying for any of it. He's terrible with money and any time he did have money he spent it on himself or his wife, no worries about that. Actually, dad, I've already asked, brother, to walk me down the aisle. There's nothing rude, cruel, or the least bit aggressive about this simple statement. If your dad chooses to read cruelty into it, that's both outside of your control, 
and not your problem to solve. He's got a chance here to gracefully accept the consequences of his behavior and take it as an opportunity to show you he can support you even when he's not given the spotlight. I sincerely hope he takes it, but if he doesn't, it's not because you've failed to deliver it. Your comment was actually really comforting to read. It makes sense that that statement isn't rude, and it should be my decision. Also it's like you people already know what my dad's like. Super spot on. My, 30F, mother, 60F, had pushed my husband, 28M, to a point where he doesn't want to see her again. Some backstory. I married my husband two years ago and since we got married things have been tense with my mother. My in-laws are a very social slash warm household while my parents are more reserved. They all live in the same city about three hours from us. My in-laws would invite us to their house often to celebrate a birthday, throw a party etc. So we visited them more during our first year of marriage. My parents never asked us to come over. We always had to take the initiative. But no matter who we came into town to see, we made sure to see both families. My parents were often invited to the same party at my in-laws. We would split holiday time between the two homes evenly. And NBSP, the first big incident was a small party at my in-laws to which my parents were invited to. We were all having what I thought was a good time until later on in the evening when my mom started talking to me about getting to see us more often. She was talking talking calmly at first but then she said I feel like I don't see you enough in a more tense way. I knew she was tipsy so I said let's not talk now, let's talk later about this. She exploded at my husband in front of everyone, yelling at him why he hates her and how I love my in-laws more than my own family. My in-laws got involved, asking her to calm down and my dad had to drive my mom home while I was in tears. And NBSP, we tried to talk things through the next day. She refused to apologize to my husband for yelling at him in front of his family and was adamant that we never wanted to stay at their house. We tried to explain, that my husband's family likes to host events and that's why we visited often and since in-laws house is his childhood home he feels very comfortable there. The conversion ended without a very good resolution but we did a better job at dividing what house we stayed at going forward and didn't hear anything else from my mom so thought the issue was solved. She treated my husband different after this, mostly small things such as roll her eyes at things he said or not laugh at any jokes he made. And NBSP, obviously this year was a little different. My in-laws moved out of country and then COVID hit. So for a few months we did not see any family. And NBSP, we hadn't seen my parents or my husband's sister for a long time so we decided to visit them around Labor Day. Later in the night myself, my mom and husband sat outside and were chatting. We had been enjoying some wine and things turned political and then things got ugly very fast from here. My mom kept blaming my husband for changing my viewpoints. I didn't really keep up with politics until recently but I'm an adult now and care more about that kind of stuff. It didn't matter if I was speaking, my mom only saw red at my husband. Saying husband had changed me into a terrible person and how husband hates her and telling him he needs to control his wife. At this point it was an ugly yelling match with lots of cussing and I had enough. My husband had been pretty calm throughout this, but even he towards the end told her to shut up. We left in the middle of the night to go to my husband's sister's house instead. And NBSP, after a few days I texted my mom. I couldn't handle speaking on the phone and wanted to lay things out clearly. I apologized for how the night went and for what was said, but I also asked her to be honest with me. I do not know why she has such hatred for my husband and that he needs a big apology and she needs to tell us why she feels this way. She refused. She apologized for saying some things in the moment and said the quickest way to heal is to move on with a clean slate. I pushed again that her saying husband had changed me into a terrible person was unacceptable and I need to know why she said that. But again she refused and only wanted to move on and she said she won't say these things in the future but doesn't really think she treats him badly. And NBSP, my husband has now been maliciously yelled at twice by my mom about hating her and changing me with no real apology or remorse. We also found out from my husband's mom that my mom would badmouth about him constantly to his own mother. Husband's mom also told us that my mom has had anger and depression issues in the past, 
none of which she has told me about. I feel sad that she hasn't talked to me about any of these things and has hidden so many of her feelings especially since I gave her an opportunity to talk to me and be honest and she refused. And NBSP, as holidays such as Thanksgiving and Christmas come up, I asked my husband does he think he would be open to seeing them and he has said no. He understands it's a horrible position to put me in, but he is tired of being around someone who hates him especially during holidays. I think this is totally reasonable, but I'm so torn. I don't want to never see my family again and my dad has been a good in-law to my husband. I think seeing my family by myself would essentially be letting my mom win. How do we move past this? If my mom refuses to change her ways do I just never see my family again? And NBSP? too long didn't read, my mom has said some horrible things to my husband and refuses to apologize. Now husband doesn't want to be around her, how do I handle this situation? Husband is in the right, but I don't want to disown my family. Your mother has verbally abused your spouse. First off, head over to r slash just no mill. Second of all, your husband no longer wants contact with her and rightly so. She's you mum. Therefore your responsibility to deal with if you still want a relationship with her. He's dropping the rope and he is 100% within his rights to do so. I went through this with my parents a long time ago. Basically the message I conveyed was, my spouse is my family and priority now, which means she gets your respect whether you're like her or not. If you can't mind your tongue and be polite when we visit then that means you won't see me either. Took about 10 years before my parents realized that I was serious since that meant that they didn't get to see their grandkids either. Eventually they learned to be polite. Yeah, I think my spouse being my family and priority now is something very hard for her to deal with. I've not given enough consequences for her actions in the past. I need to be more serious like you and really set the ground rules for being around us. Your mom is your issue to deal with, not your husband's. Sounds like you understand that, you've defended him and confronted her in the past, but just want to state that loud and clear for anyone in a similar situation. The only leverage you have in this situation is the time you spend with her, mainly in person but on the phone too. I somewhat agree that not bringing your husband around is giving her exactly what she wants, though it's also what your husband wants, so I understand why some are suggesting that compromise. What would get the snide comments to stop, though, is stronger action from you to enforce this boundary, turning around and leaving, no matter how recently you got there as soon as she says the first ugly thing about him. And of course, telling her in advance that you'll do that, and telling her in the moment that that's why you're leaving. You can't stop her from having those ugly thoughts but you can stop her from vocalizing them. But it will take a lot of consistent reinforcement, like teaching a toddler manners, and it may mean a lot less face time with your mom for a while till she understands you're serious. Put it back in your mom's court and tell her you don't appreciate her attacking your husband. Tell her that unless she apologizes and stops the attacks you're not sure if future visits will be possible. I, 23M, haven't told my girlfriend, 20F, that I don't have my high school diploma and don't know what to do. Too long didn't read, lied to my GF about having a diploma and now have no clue what to do about financial security if the oil field crashes again. I need advice at something that's been eating at me a lot lately with the virus and the crashing oil field. I've been with my girlfriend since the 18th of May 2019 on her 19th birthday. I've known her since she was 11 because her older brother was my brother-in-law at one point I hadn't seen her from 16 to 18 when my brother-in-law and sister split in late 2017 and she came over to see our nieces. Her and I started talking and started our relationship like stated above around 6 months later. I was well what a lot of people wouldn't have called a loser when me and her got together. I was 22 with no real life goals no job living with my parents extremely depressed addicted to Percocet and methadone and would only play on my computer for 12 to 18 hours a day and sleep the rest depending on how strung out I was that day on pills. I was heavily overweight and just not a great person mentally and emotionally but she stuck by my side. On our 3 month anniversary the 18th of August 2019 I got a job working on a drilling rig in North Dakota, 
I am from a state 17 hours away. I was finally getting in great shape as you could imagine bringing in roughly $5,000 a month along with the money she was bringing in from waitressing we were living together and living very comfortably for our ages. I got laid off due to oil prices on April 16th and I was scared at first but my unemployment along with the helpful extra money meant along with the warning signs that the field was going under meant I was able to save up a good chunk of money before I was let go so we weren't struggling as well she was getting unemployment. We weren't making as much as we were before but we were making enough to not worry. Well, she's in school for nursing and working as a waitress and I have just reapplied to a position on a drilling rig in Midland, Texas and prayers I get that position so I can get back to work. But I've grown up in the oil field my entire life. My dad was a tool pusher my grandfather was a company man brother was a derrick hand her old her brother was a driller at one point and I know the oil field is not a very stable industry in the long run. You can make $120,000 a year for 5 years then be laid off for 16 months. I'm worried because if the oil field crashes again it will more than likely never recover. Slowly it's gone from $160 PPB price per barrel, to $120 PPB to $80 PPB to $60 PPB now it's sitting at $45 PPB consistently and I'm afraid because she doesn't know I'm a high school dropout. When I was younger I was severely bullied to the point of attempted suicide between the ages of 13 to 17. I dropped out when I was 16 but by then I was so depressed due to my family telling me things about my weight looks intelligence and going to school hearing it all took a toll on me that took me years to get over. I never perused my GED because I was afraid of failure. I know I'm not stupid when I was in high school I was taking AP classes I wanted to go to college for physics or to be a nurse and aesthetist but it was always that what if in the back of my mind. But now being 23 knowing that more than ever the oil field isn't a permanent job anymore I'm afraid of the future. For the first time in a long time I'm afraid of my relationship outlook and financial security. In the area I mean there isn't a lot of jobs that you can make a good living off of without a high school diploma GED other than the oil field. I want to go to school for nursing like she is then continue for my nurse and aesthetist degree but I don't know how to tell her I have nothing like a diploma or GED. I've constantly told her I hadn't have heard her talk about people using their family life for an excuse of dropping out as a pathetic excuse. She grew up in a very very bad home so she just can't understand it, and regretfully I would agree with her. Now I'm stuck because I know I have job security for a minimum of 2-3 years and the maximum is unknown. I don't have experience flowing wells or anything that is still needed even after the field crashes to keep wells pumping and producing so on and so forth. I am very scared to tell her because I am afraid of the reaction rejection and fallout that would come from that. Any advice is welcome I'm sorry for making this post so long. For anyone who reads this and gives any feedback whether it's criticizing and sympathy I truly appreciate it and I apologize if this affects anyone in a negative way that is the furthest of my intentions. I'm just lost and need a third party's advice. Thank you and love to you all. Response to the support. Not sure how to respond new to reddit so I hope this is the right thing to do. I'm not exactly sure what words can explain the amount of appreciation I have for everyone who has commented. Whether they were critical or 100% supportive. Regardless if you read the too long didn't read, or my entire post I am overly grateful and words cannot express how I feel about what everyone says. Thank you doesn't seem enough but I hope you all accept it. I am not very good with opening up. With me being on the rig and being around roughnecks my entire life I have always been brought up to bottle up and keep on pushing because when you open up you show weakness and in my family and line of work that wasn't tolerated. This was difficult for me to post for the fact I do not open up easily and especially not to people I have never met. But the amount of support advice and love you all gave to me a person none of y'all have met or will more than likely never meet is beyond incredible. Thank you all very much for every bit of advice that was given and every bit of support and love that was passed on through the comments it means more than any of y'all know. I have struggled with the thought of rejection my entire life and other than when I opened up to my girlfriend about my past the traumatic parts to the rated G parts I have never felt more 
understood I suppose or accepted in my life. I have read everything everyone has said and between everybody you all have given me such a peace of mind and a clear vision that has been lacking in my mental health since I was laid off. My job was my identity because it was the first real thing I had to be proud of in my life other than my woman. It all showed me I don't have to make it my identity and I don't need to be afraid of rejection. Everything you all said had almost brought me to tears. Thank you all again from the bottom of my heart. I wish nothing but love for every person and nothing but well wishes for you all. You are all good hearted people and I am very thankful for everything you all said and I will always remember this post. Much love and prayers that you all have a very good happy and fulfilling life ahead of everyone. I will keep this post updated if anyone wants to hear the outcome of me telling my girlfriend in the near future. Again thank you all.